Nepalese cuisine, Wikipedia article audio. Nepalese cuisine comprises a variety of cuisines based upon ethnicity, soil, and climate relating to Nepal's cultural diversity and geography. Types Khaz and Pahati cuisine Himalayan cuisine Tibetan-influenced cuisine Thakalai cuisine Nwars other ethnic variations in the Middle Hills Terai cuisine Lohorung cuisine Snacks Beverages Western influence Etiquette Gallery Dalbat Tarkari is eaten throughout Nepal. Dal is a soup made of lentils and spices served over boiled grain, bought usually rice but sometimes another vegetable curry, tarkari. Condiments are usually small amounts of extremely spicy pickle which can be fresh or fermented. The variety of these is staggering, said to number in the thousands. Other accompaniments may be sliced lemon or lime with fresh green chili. Dhindo is a traditional food of Nepal. Much of the cuisine is variation on Asian themes. Other foods have hybrid Tibetan, Indian, and Thai origins. Momo Tibetan-style dumplings with Nepalese spices are one of the most popular foods in Nepal. They were originally filled with buffalo meat but now also with goat or chicken, as well as vegetarian preparations. Special foods such as sel roti and petra are eaten during festivals such as tihar. Chow mein is a Nepali favorite in modern times based on Chinese-style stir-fried noodles. Dal bat tarkari is the standard meal eaten twice daily. However, with land suitable for irrigated rice patties in short supply, other grains supplement or even dominate. Wheat becomes unleavened flat bread. Maize, buckwheat, barley, or millet become porridge-like. Tarkari can be spinach and fresh greens, fermented and dried greens, white radish, potatoes, green beans, tomatoes, cauliflower, cabbage, pumpkin, etc. The climate of hilly region remains moderate throughout the year. These kind of climate is perfect FOT horticulture. Fruit traditionally grown in the hills include mandarin orange, kaffir lime, lemon, Asian pear, and bayberry. Mangoes, apples, plum, apricot. In some seasons there is excess amount of these fruit produced. These excesses fruits are changed into some cuisines. Alcohol, pickles, Dried fruits and fruit juice are made from those excess fruits. Yogurt and curried meat or fish are served as side dishes when available. Chicken and fish are usually acceptable to all but the cause Brahmin caste, who are vegetarian. Observant Hindus never eat beef. They also eschew buffalo and yak meat as being too cow-like. Domestic pork was traditionally only eaten by Aedai Basai, however wild boar was traditionally hunted and eaten by Magars. A strain derived from wild boar is now raised in captivity and used for meat that is increasingly popular with Pahari ethnicities and castes that did not traditionally eat pork. Himalayan cuisine is influenced culturally by Tibetan and closely related ethnic groups in the Himalaya and Trans-Himalaya. The Himalayan region is not fertile as compared to other regions. Moreover, the climate is cold throughout the year with heavy snowfalls. The food crops grown in this region are, buckwheat, millet, naked barley, common beans, and high-altitude rice. Potatoes are another important staple crop and food. Substantial amounts of rice are imported from the lowlands. Also, because of the cold temperature, 
people often prefer hot and warm foods like soup, thukpa, strong tea, and strong alcohols. Grain is also made into alcoholic beverages. Butter tea is made by mixing butter or ghee and salt into strong tea. This tea preparation is commonly mixed with psampa flour to make a kind of fast food especially eaten while traveling. The cattle raised in this region are yak, charais, Himalayan goats, and sheep. People raise these animals for meat, milk, cheese, and yogurt. Most of the Himalayan regions are hard to reach. There is no proper means of transportation because of higher altitudes and it is a considerable challenge to build good road transportation. Hence only rice and some spices like salt are imported from other regions by air transport or by using animals as their means of transportation. People in this region eat taido, potato curry, momo, yak or goat or sheep meat, milk, thukpa, or strong alcohol like tongba for their regular diet. This region also imports rice from other regions and consumes dalbat tarkari from time to time. Thakalai cuisine transitional between Himalayan and lowland cuisines is eaten by Thakalai people living in Thakkala Valley, an ancient and relatively easy trade route through the high Himalaya. This cuisine is also served in inns run by Thakalis alongside other trade routes and in Pakhara and other towns in the hills of central Nepal, that were said to offer the best food and accommodations before the great proliferation of facilities catering to foreign trekkers. Thakalai cuisine is less vegetarian than Pahari cuisine. Yak and yak cow hybrids locally known as Yehopa were consumed by the lower castes. All castes eat the meat of local sheep called betta and chiangra or chiru imported from Tibet. Meat is sliced into thin slices and dried on thin poles near the cooking fire. Blood sausage is also prepared and dried. Dried meat is added to vegetable curries or sautéed in ghee and dipped into timurkeo chup which is a mixture of red chili powder, Sichuan pepper, salt, and local herbs. This spice mixture also seasons new potatoes, or eggs which may be boiled, fried, or made into omelettes. Thakalai cuisine uses locally grown buckwheat, barley, millet, and dal, as well as rice, maize, and dal imported from lower regions to the south. Grain may be ground and boiled into a thick porridge that is eaten in place of rice with dal. A kind of dal is even made from dried, ground buckwheat leaves. Grain can be roasted or popped in hot sand as a snack food. Thakalis also follow the Tibetan customs of preparing psampa and tea with butter and salt. Ghee is used in this tea preparation and as a cooking oil otherwise. Since most Thakalai people were engaged in trade, they could import vegetables, fruits, and eggs from lower regions. A large variety of vegetables were consumed daily, some especially dakin radish and beetroot dried and often prepared with mutton. Soup prepared from spinach known as gyangta was served with a pinch of timorkeo chup. Apples were introduced following the arrival of foreign horticulturists and are now widely enjoyed. One of the best-known Thakalai restaurant is Touch. Nwars are an urbanized ethnic group originally living in the Kathmandu Valley, but now also in bazaar towns elsewhere in the world and Middle Hills. In the fertile Kathmandu and Pakhara valleys, local market farmers find growing produce more profitable than grain, especially now that cheap rice and other staples can be trucked in. Furthermore, Nwar households have relatively high incomes and their culture emphasizes food and feasting. Although daily Nwar food practices consist mostly of components from the generic hill cuisine, during ritual, ceremonial and festive eating, Nwar dishes can be much more varied than the generic Pahari ones. Nwari cuisine makes wide use of buffalo meat. 
For vegetarians, meat and dried fish can be replaced by fried tofu or cottage cheese. The cuisine has a wide range of fermented preparations, whereas Pahari cuisine has beyond a few Achar condiments. Kwadi, Kachila, Choila, Pukala, Wo, Pung Kwa, Swan Puka, Sion, Mye, Sapamicha, and Sanya Kana are some of the popular festival foods. Dessert consists of Tao, Sisabusa, and Mari. There are a ka'ars made with omli fruit. Thuan and Isla are the common alcoholic liquors that Nwars make at home. There is great importance of food in Nwari culture. Nwari cuisine is one of the most delicious food with intense flavorings. There are dishes for every edible part of buffalo meat that includes intestine, stomach, and brain. That's another reason why they are famous. Buffalo meat and pork are eaten by many Janajati. More traditionally, Magars ate pork but not water buffalo while the superficially similar Gurung did the opposite. Further east, Tamang, Rai, and Limbu have unique ethnic foods including kinema, yang ben, preparations of bamboo shoots, bread made from millet or buckwheat, and traditional Limbu drink tongba. Food in the Terai south of Sivalik Hills refers to mirror cuisines such as made hilly cuisine in the east, the Ru cuisine in the west, and Bhajapurai cuisine in the center and near west of Madhesh region of Nepal. Further west, there is Mughlay influenced Awadi cuisine, particularly eaten by the substantial Muslim population around Nepal Ganje. Terai diets can be more varied than in the Middle Hills because of greater variety of crops grown locally plus cash crops imported from cooler microclimates in nearby hill regions, as well as from other parts of Greater Nepal. Fruit commonly grown in the Terai include mango, lychee, papaya, banana, and jackfruit. A typical Terai set includes basmati rice with ghee, pigeon pea dal, Tarkari, Tarawa, Papadam, Mango slash Lemon Pickles and Yogurt. For non-vegetable items, they consume mostly fish or goat curry. Traditionally there never used to be poultry items but nowadays, due to urbanization, poultry items are common, too. Nepal has seven low-elevation inner Terai valleys enclosed by the Sivalik and Mahabharat ranges. Historically these valleys were extremely malarial and populated mainly by the Thiru and Maithal peoples who had genetic resistance. Since the valleys were isolated from one another, Thiru enclaves spoke different dialects and had different customs. They may have had different cuisines although this has not been very well studied. Nevertheless, most Thiru historically obtained a varied diet through hunting and gathering as well as shifting agriculture and animal husbandry. This contrasted with diets of Pahari Hindus that were predominantly agricultural and used only a few sources of animal protein because of religious or caste prohibitions. In the 1950s, when Nepal opened its borders to foreigners and foreign aid missions, malaria suppression programs in the inner Madhesh made it possible for people without genetic resistance to survive there. The Thiru and Maithal faced an influx of people fleeing land and food deficits in the hills. Conversion of forest and grassland to cropland and prohibitions on hunting shifted the Thiru and Maithal in the east and west away from land-based hunting and gathering, toward greater use of fish, freshwater crab, prawns, and snails from rivers and ponds. Thiru raise chickens and are reported to employ dogs to hunt rats in rice paddies and then roast them whole on sticks. Mutton may be obtained from nomadic hill people such as Kem Magar who take herds of sheep and goats up to subalpine pastures bordering the high Himalaya in summer, and down to inner Madhesh valleys in winter. 
Increasing competition for land forces the Thiru and Maithil people away from shifting cultivation towards sedentary agriculture, so the national custom of eating rice with lentils gains headway. The Thiru or Maithil have unique ways of preparing these staples, such as rice and lentil dumplings called bajiya or dhikri and immature rice is used to make a kind of gruel, mar. Taro root is an important crop in the region. The leaves and roots are eaten. Sidhara is a mixture of taro root, dried fish, and turmeric that is formed into cakes and dried for preservation. The cakes are broken up and cooked with radish, chili, garlic, and other spices to accompany boiled rice. Snails are cleansed, boiled and spiced to make gonghai. Another short compendium of the Ru and Maithil recipes includes roasted crab, wheat flatbread fried in mustard oil, and fried taro leaf cakes. Lohorung are indigenous to eastern Nepal. They have a variety of food in their cuisine made from local ingredients. Some of them are Tongba, Wachapa, Wamak, Masak Dam, Kainama, Sibring. Sel roti, baweri, dhulachar, sarawa, chamra, yangpen, dibu, and so on. Snacks include maize popped or parched called kaja, beaten rice, dry roasted soybeans, dried fruit candy, and South Asian foods like the samosa and South Asian sweets. International snacks like biscuits, Potato chips and wei wei are all coming into widespread use. Whereas, some youths in Nepal prefer Western snacks as they are easy to get and less time consuming. Tea usually taken with milk and sugar, juice of sugarcane, and buttermilk are common non alcoholic beverages. Alcoholic beverages include roxai, spirits made in rustic distilleries, and jarred. Homemade beer made from rice. At higher elevations, there is millet beer tongba and chhong. Street vendor of snack foods. Roxai Distillery. Limbu tongba millet beer. Western culture has influence in Nepalese cuisine. Western food like bread, cereals, bagels, pizzas, sandwiches burgers, and pastas, and drinks like Coke, Fanta, and Sprite are common in cities and places where there are a reasonable number of tourists. Middle-class families residing in cities consume these foods on a daily basis. One can find them in almost all the restaurants around cities. Meals are traditionally eaten seated or squatting on the floor although urban restaurants have tables and chairs. A large mound of bot or a pile of roti is served on a yharki thal a rimmed brass or stainless steel plate about 12-30 cm diameter. The rice is surrounded by smaller mounds of prepared vegetables, fresh chutney or preserved pickles, and sometimes curd-slash-yogurt, fish, or meat. Soup-like dal and vegetables cooked in sauce may be served in separate small bowls, to be poured over the rice. Food is brought to the mouth with the fingers of the right hand. The left hand traditionally used for certain toilet purposes should never touch food but may hold cups and glasses. The right hand should be rinsed before and after eating. The majority of the Nepalese population follows Hinduism. One of the key principles of Hinduism is to divide people with a caste system. The caste system separates people into high and low castes. There are certain rules and regulations that so-called high caste and low caste need to follow, which influence their cuisine and the container they cook in. In such contexts water itself is highly subject to pollution, affecting containers as well. Clay or wooden containers must then be discarded while metal containers require ritual scouring. 
you will often find people drinking water by pouring it into their mouths rather than touching their lips to the container, to avoid polluting the container and contents. Hinduism forbids high caste people from eating meat from cow, yak, and pig, whereas low caste people can consume these meats without any restriction. But the Supreme Court of Nepal has abolished the caste system. Dry cooked grains including beaten rice and roasted soybeans or corn and rice pudding cooked in milk rather than water, as well as raw fruit, are less subject to ritual pollution. These foods can be accepted from any clean caste but not from the Dalit. However water and foods cooked with water can be problematic. Traditionally they are not to be cooked or touched by a person of lower caste than the recipient. For this reason even in a polygamous household the first wife should not be of lower caste than her husband. Foreigners and members of many partially Hinduized Janajati ethnic groups may occupy an ambiguous space, neither fully untouchable nor fully clean. They may not be welcome inside upper caste homes and should not presume to enter without being invited. Upper caste Hindus may decline to eat with them at all, or may avoid eating foods that are most subject to ritual pollution. Breaches of dietary etiquette were made criminal offences in Mulaki and the main corpus of civil law in 1854 and not decriminalized until 1962. Since 1962 discriminatory customs have been falling into disuse among educated and urban Nepalese, yet they often prevail in the countryside. Guests and visitors should try to conform to tradition until clearly instructed otherwise by their hosts. Dried fish dish, the rue cuisine. Rice wine, the rue cuisine. Dhikari, the rue cuisine. Quila, Newa cuisine. Gwarcha, Newa cuisine. Lapt poi, Newa cuisine. Nepalese thuppa Boiled corn with chili pickle